And it's hour three of the Nutramedical Report Thursday, live the 12th of June. And uh, oh, Thursday, I'll tell you, uh, I want to just give a, an advanced report from what Chris will be on for probably a few minutes, but we want you on the full hour, Jim. Tim, the uh, concern over full plutonium flash at the WIP nuclear site triggering a disaster that spreads to multiple waste drums. Plutonium 239. This is the main radioactive isotope and container that exploded. Anonymous employee, the warnings were ignored. They put us in danger. They had a nuclear explosion triggered off by this green kitty litter depart- ordered by Obama and the Department of Energy to probably go, quote, go green. But we're going to expand on that later. Uh, this is the kind of is news the most dangerous substance on Earth. Known to man. Yeah, exactly. Yep. One atom will kill you. Anyway, uh, Tim, let's go on continue to your analysis blog on the news. And, I, and what I want to do is kind of look in, into some of the world news items that are just popping up. If you pull up the blog, the latest, of course, is the first terror group to build an Islamic state. It's called ISIS, okay? The face of the balding, middle-aged man staring unmistakably into the camera. He's dressed in a suit and tie and could pass for a medieval bureaucrat. So uh, that's the, they call ISIS. Uh, you, yeah, you mentioned the about Islamic, this before. Uh, what is it, Republic of... Um Oh, I've, I've been dealing with this for so many hours, my brain is dead, uh, of Iraq and uh, Lebanon. Yeah, well, they, they basically, like well, what happened is the ISIS shelling uh, Kirkuk and Kurdish, uh, Peshmerga, Mer- Mer- controlled areas south of Kirkuk. Uh, so, <clears throat> but basically the Kurdish are armed to the teeth now with our little oil money, and they took over the northern city of Kirkuk. They're carving out their own uh, Kurdish empire, aren't they? Yes, they are, and uh, by taking over Kirkuk, they they uh, have taken over a key uh, refining and oil producing and oil transnational or natural uh, oil transmission area. Uh, it's sitting on top of a very large oil field, so now yeah. they don't have to take a percentage, which they've been getting under the Iraq government. Now they can take it all. Yeah. Uh, one thing we didn't cover. Uh, in the uh, earlier uh, uh, segment that I was on, uh, last night we sent in 4,000 U.S. troops uh, to Baghdad International Airport. Now that's enough to secure yeah. uh, some key facilities like our giant uh, embassy, the largest in the world, uh, at Baghdad. But it's not uh, sufficient to to break the yeah. tide. We, the Iraqi government, has asked us for air support, and so far we have denied it. Of course, Obama is saying he'll do whatever it takes. But just well, because I'm, I'm Obama sure, says the, uh, the, the, the difference between what Obama says and what Obama does is usually well, between day and night. Tim, I got a report here just 44 minutes ago from Sydney Morning Herald, and Obama will not rule out anything according to their recent visit. He's visiting Mr. Abbott in, uh, in Australia and Aussie land. Yeah. And Australia is agreeing to up their cooperative defense with the U.S., so... They gave the area of Darwin, northern Australia, over to the Americans to set up new military bases against the Chinese. So we're seeing the battle lines line up for World War III, aren't we? And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Obama says you know all options are open, but uh, Obama, if anything, is a liar. Uh, the the extremists are, are vowing to march on Baghdad to settle scores. They settle scores in uh, the second largest city by cutting off the heads of a large number of soldiers and police officers and lining them up down a main roadway. Every few feet, there was a, a, a bloody head lined up on the side of the you know the curbs. Right. That's one of their trademarks. Uh, now, it's important to understand we have been supplying, funding, and arming this group. Supposedly, uh, we we kind of split with them a month ago. Well, if you believe that, I've got a bridge in Brooklyn. I can make you a heck of a deal yeah. on. And of course, so, the insurgents are vowing to take Baghdad scores to settle. And this is right in the top news, twenty four minutes ago from USA Today. Uh, in Al Qaeda splinter militia advances on the capital. Uh, this is really explosive, and you don't hear anything from the what I call the late night TV host and chief. That's what we should call him because he'd be a great late night TV host. Obama has the skill sets. He can read a teleprompter. He's got the the neuro linguistic programming. He's a good robot if he has good writers. Now he needs good writers because he doesn't have a clue in his head. And a good teleprompter. Good teleprompter nearby. He would there. He'd be up there against Conan O'Brien and the other late night guys, like Jimmy Kimmel. 
I think he'd do fine. But I think as a president, he's a danger. We don't want him within about 10,000 kilometers of the nuclear football. We don't want him sending policy or sitting in a situation room of, yes, I'm really good at killing people. Yeah. Isn't that great? This is not a video game, well, who Mr. Who the heck Obama. is the guy? Who was his father? Who was his mother? Where was he born? What uh, what country is his citizen uh, of? Is he constitutionally right. eligible to be president? You know, those is issues were not answered yeah. during the first even campaign if you, the let, second campaign. Yeah. Even even if he was, let's say, from utter Bulgaria, uh, is he is he competent? He's never run anything. He's just a, a, a social organizer taking from one group of people to another to say, you've got too much, I'm going to give it to you, the people who don't have enough, this is the deal. <laughs> yeah. That's all yeah. he's done. Yeah, he, he never ran so much as an ice cream stand. He worked Amazing. at one, supposedly, when he was uh, a kid living in Hawaii, but everything about his past is so Sanitized. manipulated. Every single, this is so telling, every single picture of him from childhood through law school has been photoshopped. Now, yeah. I invite all the millions of our listeners uh, to, uh, to think of this. How many of your childhood or high school or college uh, photos have been photoshopped? Probably, yeah. I think about all of us could say none. I mean, no, not or, a few. None like or one if you did it as a lark. But, but the point a lark, is, you know, they for a party. But this character... Everyone, all the experts say, everyone has been photoshopped. And when he, uh, a couple of years ago, when they released his, his, uh, you know, his his uh, uh, birth certificate and all, it only took uh, a few hours for many top experts that looked at it to come out and said, "Man, this thing has been toyed with so many times." I got a, a, new, a new twist on that, Tim. I got a new twist on it. I know that the problem is they're looking for a birth certificate, but they're not looking for a spawn certificate. <laughs> oh, that is hateful. <laughs> that is hateful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> By the way, I do have to apologize to Michelle Obama because I, I, I reported several of the, the, the sites that have serious questions about whether she was you know, genetically a man or a woman. But I know someone that knows her cousin. And he says that's nonsense, that uh, she really is a female. And if I was wrong on that, I apologize. Uh, but anyway, uh, that doesn't change the fact that but her, it, it her still proves that she, it still proves that she's, um, uh, you know, dangerous. And number two, I'm sure she can pin all Mr. O. <laughs> she outweighs yeah. him by quite a bit, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah, you can pin well. him. Well... <laughs> uh, <laughs> So let's, let's talk brink, about some of the other interesting headline from the Daily Star in the UK. On the brink of hell, Al Qaeda offshoot beheads protesters as they seize Iraq. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these guys are all dressed in black. Their flag is black with some white lettering on it. Uh, they are the monsters that uh, uh, the globalists and Zionists want to present right. as, yeah. as the Arabs. Yeah, and I got news they are for monsters. you here. It's, it, it, they're not just acting like it. They they truly are. Yeah. Tim, and here's I a new report. You, got. If you are a Christian in the areas where they take over, uh, your time is probably numbered in the minutes. Uh, I, I got a tidbit for you here. Uh, CNN, two hours ago, report in Ukraine official Russian tanks have entered the country. Three Russian tanks and other military vehicles across yeah, the border into Ukraine. Yeah, I have that on my site. Uh, it was three Russian yeah. tanks and, and several other armored vehicles. Right. I've been expecting this, and I, I'll tell you, I think if you would look at the tanks, you would see that the insignia is not the insignia of Russia, but the right. insignia of the new breakaway republic. So what they did probably is they repainted them with the breakaway yeah. republic insignia to, to get politically distance Obama, uh, Mr. Putin. And, and they just have saying, people I, in there that are tank experts that, that you know, drive Right, so in the other words, tank. he's still trying to keep a political distance from them by just donating hardware. That's what I think. Back in a moment. So, uh, Tim, you wanted to mention a couple of other important things in the segment. Um, when I'm looking at the news item reports here, it appears that on multiple fronts we are having the East and the West coming together as the war games, bringing weapons in, donating weapons. These tanks are obviously donated with markings for the local people, whether the people of Donetsk or 
uh, or Slavyansk, etc., that are revolting against the... Yeah, it allows, the, the, it the allows Kukuba- Putin to, to respond to um, the weaponry that's being used against the separatists without right. sending Russian troops in. Sa- same as the, as the Iranians. The Iranians can, are donating missiles to Hezbollah, where most of those missiles are made. The Russians give the S-300 system already to the Syrians. If they decide, they've already given the Akans hypersonic cruise missile, the Alexander, the uh, Hoot super cavitation torpedo. Uh, if our Navy tries to start attacking, it's going to the bottom. And the Iranians don't even need to have shoot one bullet. What happens to our military bases if they're targeted by, you know, by Iran and Syria? They're going to go well, down. Well, the, the, the Alexander dead. or Alexander, that's, uh, it's, uh, it was named for, I think, Tsar Alexander II. The Icelander missile is so insanely fast. It's, uh, depending on which source you, you quote, it's around Mach 8. And we don't have anything to shoot it down. It was designed right. to take out key NATO bases and uh, NATO uh, radar bases and anti-missile bases on the periphery of Russia. And, uh, you know, there's, there, we really can't defend against that. Uh, we can, uh, you know, we can do other things right. to them. But right. it will get through. And the senior, uh, they're aimed Mr. at key installations in Israel. They will basically, on, on uh, day one, be able to knock out all power infrastructure in Israel and keep it knocked out for a long time. Exactly. This now, is, in Russia, uh, well, Russia. Of course, let's talk about these characters, these, these monsters uh, in uh, ISIS. Uh, we have funded them the entire time. Uh, we set up Al Qaeda, and then supposedly we broke with them and demonized them, but that was all nonsense. Al Qaeda, it really never existed as a, as a as a force. In fact, it means one of the uh, one of the translations means little toilet, uh, and that was a uh, Israeli joke on uh, uh, you know the, the dumbasses out there buying into it uh, because no self-respecting Arab group would ever call themselves little toilet. But uh, it, the, this, this latest permutation, the ISIS, is, has been funded. And uh, supposedly a month ago, we got a little bit of a spat with them, and we stopped funding them. Well, that's nonsense. Uh, that was uh, a PR. The reality is we've been funding both sides in this war now in Iraq, this war that only began within the last 48 hours or so. But yet Baghdad is in danger of falling. They've asked for air support. We're not giving it, but Obama is saying we'll do whatever it takes. Well, you know, uh, if there's one thing that, that we all should have learned from Mr. Obama is he lies. He lies almost constantly, consistently, and totally. I, the man is a born liar. And, I don't think uh, he actually is capable of the truth except accidentally. Yeah, well, every once in a while he might screw up and, and tell the truth, but, you know, that's few and far it's between. Exactly. And that's- now, I want to make a quick comment here about Mr. Lavrov, and it's at the top of the news on American News on Google. And it's his CA says, Russia sees American adventurism in Iraq behind current conflict. And he says it will end badly. Do you want to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, I, I linked something very similar to that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, it could end real badly. Uh, it, we this is uh, this is all developing, okay? And uh, it we've been a minute to World War Three for uh, about a month or more now in the Ukraine. Now we're a minute to World War Three in the Middle East. Uh, the go is to take out Iran and Syria. Uh, that's what Ukraine was all about, to tie Russia down. Remember, less than a year ago, Russia sent its battle fleet uh, off the shores of, of Syria when the United States, United Kingdom, and France and Israel were going to invade Syria because of their chemical weapons. Right. Uh, a few, about six months before that, Israel and the United States were going to attack Iran, and, and Russia and China put Put their feet down. Uh, so they had to, to 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 punish Putin, and they set a bear trap for him for the Russian bear, and that was the Ukraine. Putin handled it beautifully. Uh, he seized the, in effect, seized the key property he had to have, and that was the Russian naval base. Uh, right. Sebastopol. Yeah. But 
Yeah, but but he didn't go into the Ukraine, still hasn't. Uh, and when everybody, including myself, thought that that was imminent, and the reason is he saw it as what it was, a bear trap. Because as soon as they were tied down, then that large, the two large armies, uh, NATO and U.S. armies in uh, Jordan and U.S. and Israeli armies in Israel, both on the border with Syria, could have went into Syria. That would immediately trigger a uh, missile attack from Hezbollah, uh, a war in Iran, a war with Iran, a war with Syria, and a war in Lebanon. Uh, that's what they want. That, in turn, will trigger the Third World War, and that's all tied into the global economic collapse that's coming, that's planned. They want to reduce the population. They want to give cover to what they're doing with the economy and the world, and there's no better cover than slapping wartime conditions are. Yeah, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, uh, you, or you'll be arrested. Including and the Internet. That, In other words, communication, even oh, commenting on things. You and right. I will be silenced. Uh, Pop probably no, not really. killed, we'll, we'll, but, uh, No, they won't, they won't yeah. silence us. Well, we'll continue talking, but if, if we have to use an encrypted network, remember, there's a thing called cyberspace cloud. There's encrypted networks. There's ways of communicating. Even if we don't say it all in the show, we'll have blogs, we'll have ways of sending out encrypted communications. Well, the people well, that want to we know will find is, out. Is they screw up a lot. Their thinking process is, is, is not necessarily that good. Now, I think this, this thing that they pulled with uh, Iraq uh, is, is pretty smart. Uh, nobody expected it. And, uh, you know, to, in 48 hours to go from uh, kind of a little smothering uh, uh, thing on the back burner to uh, Baghdad, uh, over half the parliamentarians uh, flee town. Uh, and uh, Baghdad itself is in danger. That's that's a cute one. That's a cute one. But uh, you know, it's a cute one on the road to hell. Right. Uh, an yeah. immediate effect that we're apt to see, and I think Britain will face it uh, uh, quicker than us because they get so much of their oil from Iraq. Right. But uh, you're going to see uh, gas prices soar. Yeah. And, let me give you a couple uh, of more items to throw some news. I call some news meat out, out you t- uh, Tim. This is from the Drudge Report. It talks about video. Thousands of soldiers captured by ISIS. Thousands in red. The video. They have video up there. A terrorist full-blown army. Medieval Sharia law imposed. Iraqi citizens join fight. Army collapses. Iran deploys forces. America evacuated. U.S. clearly flying in drones. Rebels may capture military equipment. Wow. This is really blown. If you look at the front page of Drudge, you'll see it says that Baghdad is ready to fall. Uh, you know, this is nightmarish, uh, and I don't think people realize how serious and significant it is. Uh, the fall of Baghdad is designed to be the bear trap for Russia and Iran to start this big war. And uh, that means that uh, that uh, uh, that Muhammad or Ali, uh, who is a devout Muslim, doesn't really want to harm anybody, but he will follow orders. And he's going to get his prayer mat out before this refrigerator in Chicago or Atlanta or New Los Angeles. And he's going to go to the Lyophilized flask in the back, and he's got a probably a master's level in uh, infectious disease at some university, probably highly qualified. And he'll uh, he'll pull that vial out, and he's going to start spraying it. If this war gets going, you're going to see Americans dying like flies from stupid stupid super weapons caused by our government having an idiot policy, thinking that we can whack them, but they can't hurt us. And, of course, the same thing goes with our policy toward dealing with nuclear seismic testing, which shows most of our nuclear reactors can't withstand an earthquake, which we're going to talk about in a minute with Chris Harris, with Fukushima and with WIP reactors in Carlsbad, New Mexico, where we now have a report that Chris sent me. Now, Chris, I'd like, rather than seal your thunder, I want you to re- read it. Uh, we talked about it briefly earlier, about the WIP reactor nuclear site and plutonium-239 actually causing a nuclear explosion. And, of course, the anonymous employees saying they put us in danger. Tell us about the WIP reactor and what's going on there. Well, Dr. Bill, well, in the WIP reactor, now, now remember, this this, re, this uh, report 
there was a potential for the plutonium flash, which is a criticality event. Uh, I, right. I don't. I, I'm like I said. I haven't done the analysis on that myself. So but let's just go uh, talk about what is. What is is that the Department of Energy had a decision to cut back on the uh, the uh, waste isolation pilot plant's safety requirements to save some money, and in that they have also decided to make some changes to the packing material that's used in these. Uh, highly radioactive waste drums, which which contain plutonium salts, and they used an organic material instead of a not or instead of a non-organic material. And uh, I, in fact, I, I was just talking it over today with uh, one of my colleagues, who is uh, very esteemed uh, in in waste handling and waste processing. You know, we'll call him Barney for now, but he. Uh, Basically, he says, is that what they did? They put uh, organic material in? That's a hydrogen explosion. And yeah. um, so, you know, in the, in the present... But a hydrogen explosion kind of can trigger criticality. Well, most people don't realize that Tritron switches that, cause, that use uh, C4 plastic, which is what they used to try to detonate the nuclear weapons back uh, in the 1930s and 40s. They were actually using Crytron high-speed flash switches so they could simultaneously detonate and compress the ball of plutonium to create a nuclear explosion or criticality. When you have a hydrogen explosion, you can likewise create criticality. And what it does is it temporarily increases the neutron flux that causes a chain reaction, and that causes an explosion. So that's how it can happen. Hydrogen-triggered plutonium-239 nuclear explosions can be triggered by hydrogen, right? That's right. Yeah, it all would depend, you know, whether they're going to achieve a critical mass or not. And there's like different categories of the criticality. Yeah, but it may only be partial. Maybe it's not. Right. You know, it's not clean, so it's only like two percent of the total mass of plutonium. But enough flux occurs, you get what's called a neutron flux, and then of course it blows up the bomb and disperses all the isotopes all over Hell's Half Acre. So this is what happened with these kitty litter, these green kitty litter from the Department of Energy and the Obama administration. They went green, all right, but the green unfortunately was like the you know the uh, the goblin from you know Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, the green right. was nuclear. It was bad idea. It was turning these things literally into cooking bombs. Crazy. It, 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 yeah, and, and it didn't have to happen this way. And right. The big, what, what I was also finding is that uh, what part of the cutbacks? Well, they lost the, they lost track of, of specific drums and their locations in. in in big vaults known as panels. Right. And so you really don't know where all this material is. That well, they didn't properly log it. In other words, they, they didn't log right. the material properly to be able to track it to which ones they modified with the new green kitty litter, did it? No. I, I was, you know what? I was thinking, well, you know, they have they have impeccable records. And it <laughs> yeah. would be easy yeah. to do. You're hoping. <laughs> You're hoping. Well, hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I just know the way the way that we do things, and you know, yeah, that, that where it should be done. It makes sense. It should be done right, and yeah. uh, I guess I was wrong. That it's it's done. Yeah. In a well, more you, you guys are impeccable because yeah. you're the safety guys who come in to clean up the mess or do a, a proper evaluation. So, that's the next question. <clears throat> the seismic testing here in America with the NRC started by Jasco before he was replaced because he was opening too many cans of worms. What's happening there? Uh, they finished their evaluation of all these nuclear plants and said, guess what, they all fail, or we're going to study a lot more. What, what's the outcome? What's going on with all these nuclear plants? Several have failed outright where there's going to be modifications that have to be made. i got to go ahead and, and write you a synopsis of those so that you right. have an idea. Um, others uh, can be wished away provided that there's enough analysis. Wished away is, like, is I guess that's a term we use where right. you talk about sharpening the pencils and all that. However, uh, it's still, that, that's a lot of work in itself to, to sell that. You know, you have to actually sell, to sell it that, uh, that you are safe because you, you know, you have this much margin of safety in the, in the, uh, in the build of your plant. Well, you know, that's... Well, you need, uh, they that's, should have data, though. I mentioned before they should yeah. have uh, soil quality data, data on the structural integrity of welds, uh, crystal data with uh, basically x-ray and ultrasound of all the joints and welds and rivets. Uh, they should know the structural integrity of pipes that might be thinned out. They did a couple of years ago. They are actually trying to use a brush to clean out pipes in a nuclear reactor near Chicago. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the plant. 
I think we talked about this, and yep. the actual brush went through the pipe. It's like, well, your brush should not go through the pipe. It actually punctured right through the wall of it, trying to clean it out. Yes, it did. That, that was, what plant was that again? I think that was braidwood. I, you know, right, that's uh, it, the braidwood plant, yeah. Yeah. So, right, you know, we're starting to build up a kind of a library. And by the way, this will be all in our book, which is uh, going to include all the emails back and forth from Chris, all the analysis, other nuclear experts, uh, plant pictures, diagrams, everything. And, and so we have actual site specific engineering design things that can fix Fukushima. By the way, the other report that I have is that, uh, that the uh, ice wall, they're really, really starting to back off on the ice wall. What's the story there in Fukushima? Okay, once again, I would uh, talk to, uh, like I say, a colleague of mine who is an expert in the area of, of uh, cleanup because he was on the Three Mile, Isle, five mile, three mile Island cleanup project and all that. He is a renowned expert. And I said, well, what do you think of this ice wall? He just curled his whip and goes, nah, that's not going to get it. You know, he's, he's, he's that kind of a guy. So yeah, he's very right. candid and very open. And I've got to tell you what, he, he said, what they need is coffer dams that you could pump out from in between the two dams. So it's a coffer dam is actually two dams in a row. And uh, actually that makes a lot of sense to me. And so you could keep you could keep pumping out from in between these, so you build like a big coffer dam around the plant of of a material that's not ice. You, if you know what I mean, it's going to be a more uh, steel. It's going to be a, a real robust structure, and they haven't entertained that yet. But but you're basically they said you're, they're wasting their time with the ice wall. And plus, you know the the, the added uh, negatives of uh, shifting. Mm, basically uh, uh, liquefying material, liquefying uh, the, the ground around it, where you can cause sinkholes and other, you know, it, believe me, they don't need any more problems than they already have. Uh, they and can I, also create more problems with an ice dam. Exactly. And, of course, the ice dam was supposed to be above it. They should use Starlight, which I mentioned. I got the original information for Dr. Ron Klatz, head of A4M. Starlight will withstand 15 to 20,000 degree temperatures. It is radiation resistant, won't crystallize and break down. And if they put a starlight dam above it, they could divert the water away from the plant. Then they could set a seawall below it, filter that material out, turn it into solid radioactive waste, dispose of it in double hulled ships, taking it away to a zinc mine as the deepest mine possible. Uranium, what do you do with any of it? It's, it's all poisonous, but. Yeah. Welcome back, and uh, we have more than 50% of the uh, fuel run assemblies transferred. That's 1,034 out of 1,533. Um, Chris, they, they, these fuel run assemblies, they've managed to get the, the easy ones. They're going to have more difficulty with the harder ones. And also the problem is, as you mentioned before, the seal on the, on the overall uh, fuel rod pool, cooling pool number four, the common cooling pool they haven't touched. And, of course, the reactors one, two, and three, they really can't touch. So... Right. The, this mess isn't going to go away. And a corium is probably 75 uh, feet at least, or 25 meters below the plant. It's generating uh, highly radioactive or tritiated water, which is superheated. Uh, it's generating criticality, which emerges from the ground and shoots neutron beams, which turn the air blue with beams of gamma rays that literally ionize the nitrogen. You can see blue beams above the Fukushima plant in the, uh, after sundown. This situation is extremely unstable, and I don't know where they're getting people, but, you know, after a period of time, these people get so sick, they have to get new people. I guess the Yakuza and the uh, supply them with enough people willing to do these things that are, in a sense, committing radioactive suicide. Um, we have specific plans that we talked about to fix each of these areas. Uh, and the first thing is a starlight wall above it to divert the water. The second is to put in a, a sealed seawall area below it's to catch all the water before it goes out in the ocean. It's also to make sure they use ground penetrating radar and block off all the steam vents that actually are superheated steam driving uh, vented radioactive high, uh, hot tritiated steam out toward the ocean floor that vents radiation across the ocean floor which they could do with GPR ground penetrating radar. Um, I, I think that they need to put underneath these reactors what I call uh, boronated water, and then hit it with the scalar frequency of boron, and then basically form a super crystalline and dry it out, literally turn it into a crystalline sarcophagus, and stop trying to move things. 
I think that the idea of moving things is dangerous, other than the water that they have there, which they could do a multi-stage filter, which would include a uh, sediment, linear charcoal, uh, reverse osmosis, and an ion exchange resin. On a large scale, the system we use for pure water systems, which basically came from industry. And uh, they tried to do this with the ALPS, but the incompetence that were doing ALPS were the same incompetence that did the kitty litter, green kitty litter, that created the, turned the, uh, the, uh, literally into nuclear bombs. <laughs> I can't believe they did this. They turned the, uh, the, the whip reactor storage containers into hydrogen generating bombs that could then compress the plutonium-239 and create a partial criticality reaction, literally a nuclear explosion that would blow these containers all over the place. And that's what happened. Um, so, Chris, what's going to happen in Fukushima? What's next? Well, the, in the big picture, they're still getting the uh, advanced liquid processing system uh, running up and running. But, you know, you're also talking about what, what used to be a 10-year projected cleanup that turned into a 20-year and now I'm reading 50-year projected cleanup, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, we're not really making any progress even on the news reports. And when I go over, no. and you can go over, for example, to uh, if you go over to Jeff Francis' site and uh, you look at what his latest news reports are, um, it's I don't see a lot of what I call real progress. I see a lot of hand-wringing. Um, we see the, the West Coast near, near starfish near extinction. No one says rad. Post Fukushima radiation near West Coast rising. Japan new professor uh, R four SPF flooring could go at any time. That's the rea the, the the reactor four uh, pooling cooling pool. The floor could drop, which is what you talked about. The tritium uh, density in bypass well way over limit, which is the bypass well, the bypass water that's coming above the plant. Uh, where there are head wells are going. By the way, were there even before they built Fukushima. Uh, aerial photo shows desolation around Daiichi. Happy Fukushima video. Radiation good for you. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, will fracking cause our next nuclear disaster? By the way, fracking, I think, was part of the reason why these uh, plants went, besides the stupid idea that they had to green them, they were fracking, which caused, uh, uh, you know, pumping water and chemicals down around this site, which is literally a quarter, half mile from the whip uh, plant. I think I was, uh, when you have a salt mine, why would you allow fracking? That's so crazy, isn't it? And of course, by the way, fracking here in America is often near nuclear plants. It also can trigger off new earthquakes. We know that the Department of Mines in, in Colorado in the late 80s actually triggered off a four point something earthquake just by pumping in water in the fault lines in uh, 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 up north of Denver <laughs> in Boulder. I can't believe they did that, but they, they said, oh, bad idea. We, the Department of Mines realized we can make earthquakes too. And, uh, you know, what, what I think is going to happen is the radiation isotopes are going to increase in density. And here's where I want to turn the question over to Tim. Tim, if they strike militarily, how likely is it they're going to strike the Bashir reactor? And what would be the consequences of hitting a large, older style, designed in the 70s, large nuclear reactor with lots of fuel rods, etc., with a live bunker buster nuclear, literally completely cracked the reactor well, core. a whole lot of deaths, and that includes deaths going all the way into China, because we're at, at the immediate area, yeah. you know, will be extremely hot. Physicians for, physicians for social responsibility calculated will out. will take it to the east, northeast, yeah. and that will literally take it all the way to China. And when I say take it, I'm talking about lots of deaths. Right. How likely is it that, what will happen if they strike the uh, Bashir reactor, uh, Chris, with a, you know, the bunker buster nukes, you know, GB-54, you know, to blast the uh, nuclear reactor core all the little bits. What'll happen? Oh, the, well, then you will have, uh, if they all have to use a bunker buster, sure, the, you can expect core damage. And then I really right, and the core damage will be so yeah. catastrophic. Our physicians for social responsibility and our nuclear experts, because they've belonged to them for many years, yeah. have basically said this radiation cloud will cross Myanmar, which is uh, it'll cross China, it'll cross the South China Sea, it'll cross uh, Korea, it'll cross over Japan, and then it'll head toward us. And we're going to get blasted with radiation if these morons do this. That's us and the Israelis planning on hitting a live nuclear reactor with nuclear weapons. And also their, all their so-called uh, storage sites with bunker buster nukes. 
to hit them that are actually have underground centrifuges, which, you know, if it's down deep enough, it may not be a lot of local radiation, but there's going to be some. But hitting a live reactor, that's going to be very catastrophic. It'll also pull Russia and China into a full force conflict. So hitting a live reactor will be, okay, that's it. Nukes are flying. I just well, don't for, don't yeah. forget that the the Israelis have a a reactor uh, that's at the center of their nuclear industry, and it can also be hit. And uh, the Syrians have the uh, Alexander I, uh, the Icelander uh, in Russian missile, which virtually cannot be stopped by anything they have or we have, and it can pinpoint target. Um, their key reactor, Daymona. Yeah, yeah. And if that so, goes, basically most of Israel goes. You don't have to nuke you're, Israel, you just have to bomb their reactor. Now, uh, Chris, uh, have we had any progress on the nuclear site from JASCO in terms of the nuclear seismic testing in these reactors here in America? We're getting more of the updates as they come well, but, in. But, but getting them, does it mean that anything concrete is happening? Have they gone in and say, we're spending this no, money, we're going to fix concrete? this, we're going to fix that, anywhere? You're talking about actually digging and doing, doing stuff. Yeah, no. Doing no, stuff. There's, no, there's, there's so so there's hand wringing, there's reports right. of, we needed another report because this report doesn't look so good, so we better do another report. So basically, is it's like the Kachina dolls. This little right. Kachina doll doesn't look good, so we're going to put it inside another doll and make another doll inside the doll. So basically, we'll write another report on the report because the last one was scary enough that we should write another report. I will let you know when when I see a real design, a design change, and yeah. the amount of effort that it would take to do it, an actual you know, contract being released. Uh, to I'm gonna, I'll call it Countdown to AF, American Fukushima. <laughs> Countdown to AF. All we need is, we don't even need to have tsunami. But there are tsunami potentials. For example, Cumbo Viejo and the Azores. If that strikes the coastal United States, we're going to have a number of reactors that are going to go postal. Um, we, you know, some of that water can go up to one to three hundred miles inland if it's eight hundred feet high, which is what the nuclear uh, with tsunami experts in Zurich, Switzerland, and in here in Northern California at the Tsunami Research Center have found. So. Uh, not so good. And of course, if we attack Russia, Russia can set off Kumbra Viejo very easily. All they do is drop a conventional bomb or a small nuke and uh, here's the breaking go. news. Iran is deploying forces to uh, fight the Al-Qaeda militants in Iraq. Wow. Revolutionary Guard forces are going in to help the Iraqi troops. Well, that this means is the it's a trap for, for Iran that I've been talking about. I don't think they could avoid it, though. I think that uh, they now know that there's no choice. But our troops and our, our forces can't respond, and Obama will not have the military oomph to move forward. I think he's going to have a real problem with trying to get this authorized.